everyone, this is Yvonne from Yvonne Ceramics. In today's video, I'll be doing a video logging on how I put on overglaze decal. So I have this one here, which is a dog overglaze and gnomes overglaze and sunflower overglaze decals. And I got these at China Clay Art. So today I'll just be doing those on my glaze fired ceramics. So let's take a look at what I have in front of me. I have the overglaze decal sheets. They are colored. And then I have scissors for cutting out each pattern. And I have my glaze fired ceramics. I have today I'll be working with plates and some of these pots and some of these as well and a mug. So these are all glaze fired. I have a bowl of some clean water here for soaking my decals. Let us start with doing the plates because it's very easy to work on plates. It's flat, it's round with a big surface. I will be cutting out um, the dog first. So when I am doing the overglaze, I just cut as close to the image as possible. doesn't have to be perfect so if you look at my image I still have some border around the, um, the dock which is completely fine so this will go on here like that so I'm just gonna put this in my bowl of water let it soak for a little bit until it can easily slide off while I'm waiting for that let's cut out a couple more of these guys So I am making a bunch of these plates and pots with underglaze decals because these are what I call the evergreen product for my store. So some of them they will go into the Christmas inventory, but if they don't sell during Christmas time, they will sell during the other months like January, February, those other months as well. Let me just make sure when your decal is submerged into the water. So I think I'll cut one more. Which one should I do? Maybe the German Shepherd. All the dogs are really cute. They have lots of patterns in the um, sample um, studios website. You can check those out. I like to buy from them because there are lots of patterns to choose from, from underglaze to overglaze patterns. And they ship quite quickly to Canada too. So I'm just, I'm just using my needle tool to poke it through to make sure it's submerged into the water. Let's cut some sunflowers as well. I need to make sure the pattern is big enough. This sunflower is too big. So some of them are a little bit too big. Maybe this one is okay. I think sunflower is also a really good pattern for the fall. Like. September October season because right now with where I am there are lots of sunflowers so it's also a good product to sell at your store and it's such a bright and cheerful flower same thing I'm just gonna
So let's take a look at the first one. See if it is sliding out. Yep. Okay, it is sliding out. So this is our first stock. It is sliding out. So what I do is in the water, I just kind of move around to see if it can slide out. And it can. So I'm just going to just put it down and just slide it out like that. And then I'm using my rib. I think I'll use the yellow rib to just kind of go across the surface to make sure there's no bubbles. There's no water trapped between the ceramic and the decal. I want to make sure it lies flat. Maybe this one's too big, I will use a smaller rib. So this is my red rib. I just cut it in half because I like to use the middle circle here for rounding out the edge of my plate like like these, like that way when I'm making plates during the leather heart stage. So this is a really good tool. It has the, the little hole in the middle. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Let me make sure it's slightly centered. So can I push it a little bit? I think it's pretty good. Make sure there's no raised edge, no bubbles. Okay, okay, that's good. So I'm gonna let this dry on the side. Let's do the next one. Next plate is blue. I'm going to pick up the second dog here. Just this one here. Just gonna slide this out. So if it is submerged in water for about 30 seconds to a minute, it should slide out quite easily. So I want to make sure the pattern is in the middle. Then I'm using my rib to smooth it out, push out any air bubbles or water beneath the decal. So this is a really great project for beginners or for students. Let's say they have some free time after they finish the project. This can be a, quite a fun incentive for them to make. Okay, next one is another dog. Let's choose yellow. So these are all Amoco Celadon glazes. I like to choose Celadon glazes for this project because it's a very stable glaze. It doesn't move around at all. So that is something I want, especially this has to go through a third firing. I want something that doesn't move during the third firing. Like if I use a glaze that moves and runs, then it could affect the decal that sits on top. So this pattern is a little bit long. I have never done a pattern that kind of extends out. So we will see how this one works. Just try to make it as flat as possible and with no air bubble. But if you can see the ears here and the edge here, it's kind of, there's a little bit of air bubble. So I'll try my best to smooth it out. All right, let's do the sunflower one. I want to do it on a blue plate because I want to create this image that the sunflower grows, the beautiful blue sky. This same thing, this decal is a little bit long. So I'm wondering if I should have the flower, the whole flower in the middle, and then the stem just kind of extends out here. I think it looks nice this way. So I'll just move that out. So these plates are quite easy to make. I use the, so first I cut out a circle and then I use 
use the GL pottery form that is about this big and I put the clay circle on top of the sponge. I have a sponge for hand building, a really big sponge. They are just kind of like the cushion replacement you use. I get those at Michael's. So I just put the clay round on top of the sponge and then use the gel pottery form on top of the clay and then just push it down and then flip it over and fix up the back because sometimes when you push down a clay if your clay is too dry um, it will create like creases and wrinkles on the back of the clay so this one you can't really see it but sometimes you have to smooth out the bottom and to ensure you have a really flat non-wobbly plate what I like to do is I like to kind of flip it over without without touching it too much so if I need to transfer the plate from the sponge to a bat I kind of flip it over with a bat so without like just peeling off and touching the clay because clay has memory I, I like to just flip it over with the bat and the sponge so try not to manipulate the clay too much or else your plate will be wobbly I'm just trying to smooth this out. There's a little bubble here. Right here. I hope this one should, will be okay. You kind of have to be like a perfectionist in these because it takes three firings to complete this. And then the decal itself is quite expensive too. Trying to make sure everything is perfect. Okay, next let's do the norms. So when I first got the norms online, I didn't quite look at it carefully. But when it first came, I thought it kind of looked quite Christmassy because with the stars and the red hats and the gloves, it looked quite Christmassy. And I didn't realize that. But I guess I can still use it on the pot. I'm thinking it on here, but even the smallest one is quite big for this pot. If I put it on this one, it might work. Let's try it on the small one. Some of the big giant gnome, I still haven't figured out what to do with those yet. Because they are just so big. Okay, let's soak this gnome in here first. And the water and then this one I might actually do a gnome on oh, no this one is too big the tip is sticking out of the mug maybe this one would work this one I was initially doing going to do the sunflower but then if I do a Christmas gnome and a sunflower it doesn't quite work so I might just stick with just a gnome on the mug. So I might do two gnomes because oh this is really close. This here I need to cut really close and not made a mistake. Okay, I think I got it. Oh my gosh, it's so close together, this pattern. Okay. So this morning I was cleaning up my office space upstairs. It was just full of junk. I was just too busy. Just piled up all my inventory in my office and today decided to clean out my office space because I'm getting just too much stuff in my studio. I need more space, especially now I'm doing jewelry as well, like ceramic beads and jewelry. I start making bracelets to sell at the store. So I definitely need more space. Actually, I started the idea of making bracelets and jewelry because my mom 
she has a lot of these beads and jewelry that's what she loved to do and so after she passed away i just got inherited a lot of these beads and stuff so i thought why not just try it right okay just trying to figure out what to put on this pot these guys are just too small i'm not sure what to do with those Okay, the small one's good now. Let's try on this part. So there's a line here. That's where the slip cast line is. I'm going to use a norm to try to mask it. And let's see how this works. Because this part is on a curve, it's going to be a little bit hard to do without the wrinkles and stuff i'll try my best but i might have some trouble smoothing it out because it's on a curve the next one i might need to cut some lines here to just help with the curve and the wrinkles Okay, I think that's the best I could do this. I just don't like this wrinkle here. Let's see if I can smooth that out. Yeah, as I was saying, okay, I think this is good. That's the best I could do. The next one, I need to cut some slits on the pattern. So that's one. Those, these are the bigger ones, so it has to go on the mug. I'm thinking, I guess I don't need to cut slits on this one. It's not as curved as that one. Okay, if I do one here, one here, and one here, so three of them. It should look pretty good, right? If I put it here in the middle. You kind of also have to be a designer as well. So you're thinking if someone holds the mug like this, they want to be able to see the design of the gnome like that. Yeah, so I was saying I was just cleaning out my office because I was a teacher before, so I've got lots of teaching materials, inventory, papers, and stuff. I was cleaning out my office. Hopefully I can have a bigger desk up there and just have it more organized. So after I cleaned out everything, I just found that I have a ton of games and just teaching stuff. And it just so happened one of my Facebook friends, she uh, is starting to teach a new kindergarten class and is looking for a new or like use um, toys and books for her classroom so i contact her and see if she wants some of my stuff okay i think the loan looks really good okay i'm gonna put one more here oops this one kind of slipped out oh no this one came out so if you put it in the water too long kind of can slip out so i need to be careful here if you can see I don't want it to slip out of the backing paper. And the reason why I don't want to slip out of the backing paper because it will be hard for me to put on the mug. Ah. No, no, no. Maybe put it this way. Okay. I'm putting one right here because that's where the line for the slip cast mark. All right, let's continue with our norms. Uh, I want to show you the mark first. So I got this one here, second one, and third one here. So when someone's holding the mug and drinking, 
you'll see lots of gnomes. I think this looks pretty good. Okay, so for these bigger gnomes, I thought the best way to deal with them is to put them on the plate because they are so big. I know the tip's going to stick out a little bit, but that is the biggest thing I have for these gnomes. Because this gnome is red and I have a red plate, I don't think it will work too well. It, like, it won't stick out that well, red on red. So I'm choosing to put it on, this one's on the green plate, so kind of Christmassy. And then there is also the yellow plate. I try to cut as close to the image as possible. I find that when I cut it really close, I actually get less wrinkle. It's easier to smooth out too. Okay, I think this one's good. And then the last gnome will go on this yellow. So this is the speckled clay I had. I bought a box of speckled clay. This is kind of like the last of it. Oops, there's a little wrinkle here. To make sure it's centered. So I don't quite understand gnomes, but I do make gnomes, like hand-built gnome sculptures. And they do tend to sell quite well, but I just don't quite understand the thing of gnomes. When I make gnomes, because I don't quite understand them, I try to make them cute. Like my gnomes, they don't have eyes. They're kind of similar to this one here with a hat and a body and a nose and a beard. And I try to make them cute and seasonal too. That's pretty cute. Okay. Now with the red plate, yeah, I don't know what happened here. I think I'm going to do sunflower because yellow on red looks quite nice. But I just want to find one that fits on the plate. They're quite big. They're all so big, maybe this one will work. Yeah, I don't know what to do with um, the rest. Some of these pictures are just so big. And then there's my dog, who's not really happy, just going running up and down the stairs because she just wants to play all day. Okay, just trying to cut as close to the edge as possible. So I want to show you this part, the super curvy part. I did put some gnomes around it, so three gnomes around this whole pot. And then for the red plate, I did put the sunflower on it, we'll see how it goes. Now I'm left with these two pots, this one is so short and curvy. And so I've got this overglaze from a while ago, I finally found them. And this is just uh, some vines with some purple flowers. I thought I'm going to cut it up and then put it around the pot like that. And I also cut some slits too here because this pot is so round. So we'll see how, to, how that goes. Let's just put this in the water. This one I might put more gnomes just like this one here just to see how it goes. Okay, so let's try the purple flower decal. So I'm going to try to stick this part into here. And then try to pull this off. It's so curvy. This is so hard. I feel like I should cut a 
a slit here cut this part and then yeah i think that's what i'll do because it's just too long okay never done this before but i'm going to cut you up oh no it's so delicate okay okay I got it. I hope it's okay to have the decals on top of each other. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this. I mean, this is going to be an experiment because I never done decals on top of each other. Okay, that's the best I could do. So here's another another gnome pot here, also three gnomes. I call this my little treasure pot because you can put any kind of treasure like jewelry, coins in them. Cute little pots to have. And then for my little pot here, it has a lid, but I'm not firing that because I'm not pour, putting any decals on that. So I'm only firing this one. I did have to put another cut here so that it can fit nicely. I think it looks okay. You can't really see the cuts. Uh, let's put some more here. I cut up some more patterns. So this one goes like that. So I realized for this part, because it's so curvy, I have to put cut each piece quite small, like quite short. The lengthwise is okay, it's just it cannot be so wide. It has to be like short little pieces. And I guess that's okay too. That means I can just get, kind of customize the pattern the way I want it. I think this one goes like that. goes like that and then the side so I love this pattern because you can kind of be a little bit creative and kind of mix your own pattern because it's just all vines and flowers i think actually this one i want to be like so close like that and then there's one more here i think i'll go here like that So this is one side. Let me go ahead and do this side as well. Okay, so I soaked the pattern. Now let's put them on. So when I first discovered over glazed decals, so, so first when I did ceramic, when I was learning on it, I started with under glazed decal and it was pretty easy. My teacher knows how to do the under glazed decal. And I found it quite fun actually to uh, play around with under glaze decal. But then when I first discovered over glaze decal, which is these ones, um, I realized that there weren't that many people who had like videos or teaching on how to um, do under glaze decal. So yeah, I have to do a lot of exploration myself testing myself as well um i didn't even know what cone fires do i have to email the company and ask them because their website didn't really say and they have like gold overglaze and the colored overglaze apparently the color one it fires to cone 019 whereas the gold one 
goes to point O eighteen. So if I were to do both gold and the color one, I have to do two separate kiln load. So I always collect like a bunch of things so I can like fire just one load that's gold and one load that's colored or else it will be too expensive if I don't have like um, a full load of gold. So yesterday I actually did a load of gold and it's just sitting in the kiln right now waiting for me to unload. Trying to figure out how I should put this pattern. Maybe like that. And then have one like that. So I actually don't know how this part will go because there's so much overlap and the wrinkles as well. This is kind of like a test part for me. And that's with ceramics too, there are lots of time you're just kind of testing it out, see how everything works out. Okay, I think that's the best I could do. So let me just show you the part. So this is the side I just did, and this is the side that I first did. I'll also get the lid to show you guys too. So this is the lid for the purple part, which is this one here. I can't find the pink one, it's somewhere in the box. So after firing, it should look like that. It's pretty cute, right? So I call this also my treasure box because you can open the lid and put a little bit of treasures in here. It's a cute little pot, right? So I won't put any decals on the lid, I think. It will be too crowded, too much pattern if I put anything on it. Okay, so this one's done. I have to do one last one, which is this purple one. All right, so I have finished all the overglazed decal. Just want to quickly show you guys. This is the purple pot. And that's the pink one. I think I like the purple one more because it's purple flowers on purple. But we'll see until, it, like, I won't know until it's finally finished firing. Then we have the little gnome treasure pots. And then we also have a bunch of plates. There's the gnome one and the sunflower one. And of course, there's the dogs as well. And then the last one is the mug with the medium-sized gnomes.